Over this past weekend, Matthew Bolin competed in the Tiger Paw Invitational in Clemson, South Carolina. Heading into this NCAA event, Bowling was slated to compete in the men's 200-meter dash, and given his outstanding record for the previous few years in 2021 and 2022, where he won both the SEC Championships outdoors and the indoor NCAA title in 2021, he was unquestionably expected to place quite high in this competition, but against the odds on favorite Matthew Bowling, he only placed fifth in this competition, with a finishing time of 20.59 seconds. Finishing ahead of bowling in this meet were Emmanuel Bynum from Tennessee, Kennedy Leitner from Kentucky, Javante Harding from the University of Tennessee, and also Cameron Miller from Louisville, who ran the fastest time in the NCAA this season with a spectacular new personal record of 20.33 seconds, a PR by almost two-tenths of a second. Bowling's finish here was certainly far from what many people were expecting, not only because he came into this competition ranked number two in the country, but because if we go all the way back to 2022, we can see that Bowling never ran quite this slow, except for his NCAA Indoor 200 meter finals, where as you can see, he tripped pretty drastically coming down the home stretch, which slowed him down significantly. Also, if we go back further to the 2021 indoor season, Bowling never ran a time slower than 20.53, which only added to the fact that this performance was far from what people were expecting. After this 200 meter time of 20.59, many people were beginning to ask questions as to whether or not Bowling could return to the top of the 200. And well, what he did next most definitely showcased that he still has some incredible speed in his legs. In the men's 4x400 meter relay, Bowling was set to race in the very first heat on the University of Georgia's opening leg. Running all the way out on the outside lane, Bowling was yet again leading this UGA team to a potential national ranking time. And well, let's just say that he ran out of this world fast. Now, to better understand at just how fast Bowling ran this opening leg, I wanted to take a trip back to a recent video that we uploaded, where Ja'Cory Patterson from the University of Florida ran a 45.81 second opening leg for Florida. At the time, this performance would have been the top ranked time in the NCAA, as a sub 46 second clocking for the 4x4 is absolutely flying. And while this time most definitely showcases amazing speed, Matthew Bowling just threw down an even faster performance. For the opening 200 meters of this first leg, Bowling was running right next to Justin Braun from the University of Southern California. Now, for this opening lap, this matchup was mostly a race as to who would make it to lane 1 first after the first lap, because in the indoor circuit, getting into lane 1 and holding your position is extremely valuable, and even though it didn't seem like they were running on a super hot tempo at this point, they were actually flying. Once Bowling started to cut into lane 1, we saw something pretty crazy. If you'll take a look closely at the race clock here, it seems as though his opening 200 meters was achieved in just under 21 seconds, which would be pretty ridiculous for an opening 200 in a 400 meter run. Now it is important to mention that there was no official opening 200 meter split in this performance, but it really does look as though he dipped just under this 21 second mark. In thinking about all of the great indoor 400 meter moments that I've ever seen, I don't think I've ever seen anyone run under 21 seconds flat. In fact, even for Michael Norman's indoor world record from 2018, his opening 200 was only 21.33, which is certainly moving, but amazingly, it actually does appear as though this opening 200 was even faster. With such a crazy opening 200, it seemed likely that bowling would tie up significantly over this final lap. However, with one of the greatest opening 400 splits to date, he ran this 400 in 45.19 seconds, which is not only much quicker than what Ja'Cory Patterson ran two weeks ago, but it's a time that would now place him number two in the world for 2023 in the indoor 400 meters. This is a huge response to his rather unusually slow 200 meters. Despite not nearly running how he wanted to, I think that this 400 meter performance tells a pretty big story about his 400 potential, and honestly, this is an event that I personally have wanted bowling to do for years. If we go all the way back to bowling's senior year of high school, he ran one of the most stunning 400 meter relay splits of all time. For this state meet, bowling was running the anchor leg, and just take a moment to see how far behind bowling was for this final lap. This really did look as though it was a nearly insurmountable lead. 
but with an unforgettable final 400 of 44.74 seconds approximately, Bowling not only stunned the crowd here, but I think he kind of shocked the world with his performance. Now, it does matter that he ran this after a running start, so his time from a block start would probably have been over 45 seconds. But still, this is pretty remarkable for a high school athlete, and to do it with not much specialty in this event is just kind of crazy. During his high school days, Bowling was quite infamous for his amazing come-from-behind victories, and this 4x4 anchor leg just might have been his greatest relay split to date. With this newfound 45.19 split, I think that it might be time for Bowling to seriously consider the 400 meters as a new specialty. And there's two reasons behind this. One, Bowling obviously has strength behind his natural speed, as we saw clearly and evidently when he ran the third fastest 300 meter race indoors earlier this season. And this was also his first time ever running in the 300 meters. And number two, Competing in the 200 meters in the United States is arguably the most difficult team to make for any world championship team or Olympic qualification. If Bowling ever wanted to qualify into a global championship individually speaking, he would have to compete with Noah Lyles, Arianne Knighton, Kenny Benarek, Fred Curley, there's also Michael Norman, Terence Laird, and potentially many, many other athletes that will likely be competitive during the national championships. Finding your way into a world championship team for the United States in the 200 specifically practically means that you'll be able to make it into the finals. This team has historically been that fast. So for bowling to see any international success in this event, he would have to improve quite drastically, probably running consistently under 19.9. However, if we move over to the 400 meters, it is a completely different story. I think if Bowling were to specialize in the Open 400, he would have a very real chance at running near 44.50 seconds, if not slightly faster. Now, the 400 meter team is also an extremely difficult team to make for the US, as it includes Michael Norman, last year's world champion, champion Allison, Michael Cherry, Kamari Montgomery, and again, many more athletes likely getting close to 44.5. But, in my personal opinion, I think since Matthew Bowling has never trained exclusively for this event, he has a huge amount of room for improvement, and if he needed any more proof of this 400 meter idea, this opening 400 meter split at Clemson University just might be it. Responding to a big loss can be rather difficult, especially when this loss is unexpected. However, just one hour after placing fifth in the 200, Matthew Bowling once again showcased some incredible resolve with one of the fastest 400 meter splits of the season. Thanks for watching everyone, and as always, until next time.